For hyenas, life in the wild is tough. Every day they have to fight to survive in a world full of danger. Battles with other predators, hostile environments, and daily struggles in complex families. Hyenas' lives are full of challenges. And us humans? Well, we make it even harder. Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. For those of you that don't know me, hi, I'm Jules. In this series, we've been exploring hyenas and why they're worthy of the same love and adoration people usually have for traditionally charismatic carnivores like lions. Over the last three episodes, I've shown you why I love hyenas, and hopefully you've learned to love them too. Thank you to all of you who watched the series so far. It's been awesome to see how many people have enjoyed it. The whole point for me was to start a conversation with you, the audience, and it's been really awesome to see your comments. Lots of people have said that we've changed their mind about hyenas, which just totally makes my day. Some of you aren't convinced yet, and that's okay too. Thanks for sticking with us anyway. This time I want to explore another tough subject, conservation. Most wildlife documentaries paint the areas that we film in as Edens, vast landscapes where animals roam free as they always have for thousands of years. But the reality is, is that it's a lot more complex than that. In addition to the everyday challenges of life in the wild, us humans present the greatest threat to hyenas and their way of life. Today, I want to explore some of these threats and tell you about some of the amazing people who are working really hard to protect hyenas in the wild. And I'm going to show you how you can get involved and help protect hyenas too. So, let's go. First up, let's recap. This is the Tenatena hyena clan. They live on the banks of the Baka Baka Lagoon in the middle of the Insefu sector of South Waingua National Park. The park is an amazing wilderness, full of beautiful animals. It feels like a paradise, and it is. It stretches for miles around, and it's easy to feel like this landscape has no end. But that's not the case. Most protected areas are like islands. Inside, animals can roam free. There are no fences, but humans live right outside the park, and that often means trouble. For people living around national parks, life can be hard. Elephants come out of the park and destroy your crops, predators kill domestic animals, and that's without all the usual challenges of having lions in your backyard. Most people are aware of the poaching crisis facing Africa. Elephants, rhino and pangolins are being slaughtered for ivory, horn and scales. But not as many people know about the bushmeat trade, which is the illegal trade in wild meats. For generations, people have lived alongside animals. They've hunted and trapped them, but populations were small, and mostly it was just to put food on the table. But now, as towns and cities have expanded, the bushmeat trade has grown to a point where it's vastly unsustainable. Demand from cities and from overseas is driving an increase in poaching. Now, poachers don't necessarily set traps for carnivores. They'll lay large wire snares for animals like buffalo and elephant for meat and ivory, and small snares for antelope. The problem is, is that these snares are indiscriminate. Poachers will lay a long line of wire snares in the bush, and any animal that comes through can be caught. And that means hyenas and other carnivores moving through the area can get trapped too. A wire snare is a brutal way to die. It's like a lasso. The more you pull it, the tighter it gets. Where a small impala would be restrained, hyenas are able to break free of the trap. But they're left with a horrible wire snare around their neck, choking them, or around a limb making it hard to walk and hunt. I've seen how bad hyenas' injuries can be when they're caught in snares. They're so strong they're often able to rip the snares free from the trees that they're attached to. But they can't remove the wire from around their necks. I'm not going to show you the full extent of their injuries. It's pretty upsetting. But I'm sure you can imagine how your pet dog at home would feel with a wire trapped around its neck, choking it. 
But it's not all gloom and doom. Fortunately, there are some amazing people who have dedicated their lives to studying, understanding, and rescuing hyenas and other carnivals from these threats. ZCP is a non-profit organization that works to conserve large carnivals in Zambia. We're one of the largest carnivore conservation projects that's field-based uh, on the continent. The work that we do is very important because large carnivals everywhere are facing a lot of threats and that is leading to their decline in numbers. We actually focus on the whole range of, of large carnivores, so African lions, wild dogs, spotted hyena, leopard, cheetah, and uh, we're 100% field-based in three projects across the country. In order to find ways of protecting these animals, we need to understand different aspects of their behavior, different aspects of their social organization. The animals we're studying range over thousands of square kilometers and so trying to follow them on the ground in the dry season is very difficult and in the wet season it's actually impossible. Fortunately, most of these groups have radio collars and the ability to track them from the plane and see them from the air is essential for us. Having aerial support completely changes the game for our conservation efforts and so it provides critical amounts of information and it really helps with anti-poaching. They're right above the strut. Every time we fly, we get locations on the animals, then we have ground crews that are able to go up and, and follow up on the location on the ground. And if an animal is snared, then we can actually remove the snare. It's intensive, it's expensive, it takes a lot of time and effort, but it's well worth it. Being the top predators, uh, the carnivores uh, helps to uh, balance the ecosystem. So by conserving these animals, we are actually conserving the entire ecosystem. Basically why, why we do what we do is trying to understand how best to protect them in a fast-changing world. Amazing work, right? Matt Tundi and Henry from ZCP and Rachel and her team at CSL have committed their lives to research and conservation. And it's people like them that are giving hyenas and other animals in the wild a fighting chance at a future. ZCP and their partner organization, Conservation South Luangwa, are working hard with the Department of National Parks and Wildlife to understand and protect wild animals in South Luangwa. They monitor hyenas and other carnivals to better understand their behavior. And when an animal is spotted with a snare, ZCP and CSL are able to follow up and remove the snare before it's too late. They dart the animal with an anesthetic which makes it go to sleep. Then they're able to move in, cut the wire snare free and treat the wound. It's amazing to see how an animal can go from suffering and on the edge of dying to bounding around in the wild within just a few short days. Interventions like these are critical to the survival of predators. But they're also able to help other animals like buffalo, elephant and giraffe, which are injured by snares. This vet work is saving individual lives right now, and the survival of the species will be ensured by the generations to come. And it's not just the vet work. They also send out teams of rangers to find and remove wire snares before animals get caught in them. Each time they patrol, they're able to take snares out of the forest, which would otherwise have caused animals harm. So you can see how important this work is and how a little bit of intervention goes a long way in ensuring animals can continue to lead wild lives. One of the things that bugs me about the films we make is that all too often we leave people with the knowledge that something is wrong, but no way of doing anything about it. But not this time. This is where hyenas need our help. ZCP and CSL urgently need funds to support their research and desnaring work. They need money for anti-poaching patrols to conduct snare sweeps. They need plane time to observe the park from the air and follow carnivals. They need vet supplies and anaesthetics so they can perform life-saving work on hyenas and other carnivals. We're running a fundraiser for ZCP and CSL alongside this video, and if you're able to contribute, we'd really appreciate it. I'm sure the hyenas would too.
the price of a single cup of coffee could fund the removal of a snare set to trap animals in the wild. If you're not able to contribute financially, you can still support hyenas by telling people about them. Speak to your family, your friends at school, your colleagues at work, and tell them about the things that you've learned, about how amazing hyenas are, and about the important work that ZCP and CSL is doing to protect them. And if you want to run your own fundraiser in your community or school, let us know. We'd love to support you. We made this series to inspire a change in people's perception of hyenas. And it starts with you, with a pledge that you'll think differently about them. I hope you'll spread kind words about hyenas and help others to see the true beauty of these beasts. I want to thank all of you for joining me on this adventure and becoming part of our hyena clan. We're going to be doing more series like this, so stay tuned. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook and make sure you've liked and subscribed to be notified of new videos. Well, that's it from me for this time. I'll leave you to enjoy some highlights from our adventure together. I'm looking forward to our next one. Until then, stay wild.